Okay, so I know quite a few people are coming back to the game and even if you're not someone who's coming back to the game, I feel like this could help you out quite a bit. So with this video, I'm basically, I made a sort of a checklist of everything you need to do in the game, whether you're a new player, whether you're a returning player, whether you're still playing. Some of the stuff can be very easy to miss uh, on a certain day, especially if you're, let's say, busy and you only have a few minutes to play. So I made a list of everything you need to do on specific days, uh, daily, weekly, monthly, all of that. And I'm going to share you a list with it. That way you're able to keep track of what you're doing and uh, you do not want to miss out on especially the free stuff that is happening and also try to make this list in the pinned comments so if you just want a text form of it i will leave it there but if you want an explanation of how stuff works as well especially if you, it's something like a new content that you haven't done i'll be making it as well so let's go so first i'm gonna start with content that is specific on various weekdays so let's say uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, all of that. So Monday will be, of course, the most action-packed. And I'm going to start with the free stuff that is super easy to gain. So first of all, you'll want to go to the account shop, account level benefit, and you'll want to claim your free gold. You can do this every week. So that's free 200,000 gold. After that, since Monday is the day most weekly stuff resets, you will want to head to Kairos Dungeon. Uh, and I feel like this is one of the most important ones, you will want to complete your illusion garden. Now, however much you can push is up to you, but make sure to do it every week because first of all, we're getting very limited four star light and dark units. And sometimes we will even get five star units, which you can either build or use for something like skill ups or exchanging monster pieces. With that, you will want to head over to expedition and complete your seven weekly entries as you can see here again i forgot it myself so if you're able push it for the hard level one if not just stick with whatever level you are able to complete later on you go to dungeon and you head over to dates and this one i really really recommend completing on monday because if you complete this as early as possible you will also be able to do so called support runs and Support runs are runs where you no longer get the main rewards, however you can get some rewards daily as well. Most of these will be only one reward, for some of them like Foggy or Meters it will be two or three, so uh, make sure to do the weekly raids, especially for the elite raids, so everywhere from Foggy Prison to Tree of Heroes, and a hero raid if you are able to. Also this will have daily entries, these are these won't really drop the rewards too much. This is the most important one. And as far as for seal, you will also want to complete your weekly entries. However, this is not as gatekept uh, daily as it is weekly. So two seal runs per week as well. And of course, uh, just so I don't forget to mention, once you're done with your seal weekly runs, you should also look into completing the five support runs for it because each support run will pretty much give you a six star runes if uh, i recall it correctly after you're done with raids uh, you head over to your profession you go to processing and you will want to craft all of the items that you have unlocked uh, in the props for sale tab so all of these items uh, when sold will give you a lot of gold and all of these are profit uh, some of them you even need for crafting for example the handmade doll you need for a lot of outfit craftings so make sure to craft as many of these as you have unlocked. Then you'll go over to the alchemy page and you will click on the mystical scroll. So uh, the one I really encourage you on crafting is the weekly three mystical scrolls. Whether you craft the daily one or not is up to you. I personally do not craft it because yes, it is a scroll. However, I calculated that the value you get from wasting all of these materials simply doesn't pay back. Uh, the cost of the scroll so i personally don't do it but if you really want to hunt for those banners the daily mystical scroll as well and another optional thing is the legendary scroll pieces again i personally don't craft them because they are super expensive for the amount you get but you can also craft five pieces every week then you will want to head over into your guild town 
and locate the guild crafting table. You can do it like there, you can do it through here. You open up the grill crafting table and make sure to grab the most expensive high XP boost remedy potion. This one, I would recommend crafting every week regardless whether you need it or not. For the other ones, it depends whether you want to use them or not. I personally don't craft them anymore uh, because I have an overflow of the highest tier ones. But if you do want them, feel free to craft them. And on top of that, there are some scrolls that you can craft here as well. Again, depends on whether you feel like they are needed for you or not. For me, they are not worth it, so I do not craft them, but the three weekly scrolls of each element are available here as well. On top of that, there are some materials needed for uh, various guild tower crafting. So there are the saws and then these assembly spanners. Once you have everything maxed out, there's really no point in crafting them anymore because they are only used for specific levels. As you can see, if your uh, guild has everything maxed out, you can stock them up, but there is no use in wasting your resources if you're really struggling with those. Okay, after that, we head over back to processing. And this is, again, sort of an optional thing, but if you're someone who has trouble attending the Baphomet boss, you may want to look into crafting the weekly altar leather as well. This item is needed for outfits mostly. But uh, if you are able to attend the Baphomet, it's not as important. If you are not able to attend the Baphomet, I do recommend crafting it. I personally myself had to craft this quite a bit because the Baphomet simply happened at night for me. But yeah, again, optional, but uh, make sure to craft it if you do still need them. And to top off the Monday, we are going to the shop. So first of all, in the arena shop, you will want to buy the restoration stone and the five star devil mode now any other item is optional personally for myself i only have enough points to get those weekly for any other item that you may want such as like the mystical scrolls four star devilmon pieces joker pieces those are up to you if you have the arena pass you will of course be able to afford more of them without the arena pass it can be a little bit rough uh, to get enough coins for it then in the guild shop you will want to make sure that you buy the mystical scrolls they are super good value in here three per week and on top of that again any other stuff that you may want you may want to be buying half magician pieces if you still need them you may want to be going for the light and dark scroll that is up to you for me i personally don't see enough value in spending 500 points anymore especially since both of the heart magicians are maxed but if you still need them uh they are available here as well and of course the ascension shop so in here usually you will have an overflow of a uh, trial of ascension tokens so make sure to spend uh, them on purchasing the valkyria piece the cost for these five star pieces is insanely low so you should be buying these as a priority over anything else in the shop and of course the battle mammoth pieces if you still want to collect some four star uh, pieces now for the magician edition logs uh these are capped at three per week they are a little bit higher in the korean server i believe it was like nine per week so there is a chance that an update will come out and you will simply not be an able to spend enough tokens to get all of these so that's why i personally don't add it as a priority to purchase but uh, for now if you are still struggling with skill ups if you want to unlock those new skills you can purchase the weekly research log pieces as well. And the last thing for Monday is don't forget that it will be the first day of the siege battle. So you will want to head over there and do your siege. And now we finally arrive at Tuesday. Hopefully the next few days are not as action packed. So on Tuesday, what you will want to do is head over to the guild infinite raid and uh, not only to claim your rewards, but also do a run for it uh this content is locked on monday but it does unlock on tuesday so you are able to do it from tuesday to all the way up to sunday so on tuesday you go here and trust me this is super important content because the rewards in here are insane first of all uh you get rewards based on your guild rank let's say we got uh from rank 4 to 10 ones almost 2000 crystals 2.5 thousand gold 
And also, you get a reward based on how well you did. And if you look at the amount of items you get here, it's actually nuts. Uh, four of these mirrors, they are a bit expensive to craft, so definitely don't miss out on those. They are needed for crafting uh, your weapon outfits. 1.5k Breath of Life, 150k Skystones, and 3000 Enhancement Shards if you reach the max level. And even at lower levels, uh, these awards are super, super good. And naturally, Tuesday is again the second day of Siege. So if you haven't done your Siege on Monday, make sure to do it on Tuesday as well. And now we skip Wednesday because nothing important happens on Wednesday and we go to Thursday. And on Thursday, World Boss will be the setting. So this content resets on the same day as the update pretty much. Uh, it resets on Thursdays, uh, on Thursday night. So basically whenever Thursday comes out, the boss is already available you'll get a bunch of rewards this again is super important content to do because look at the amount of rewards you can get you can get symbols you can get purple artifacts uh the, the rewards here are just insane and you really need to do it uh, to complete them you can see the rewards in here in total for example i'm currently 11 to 50 i get a blue tier symbol 50, no 30 quick battle tickets 3000 of these coins and there will be another system where you get a little bit of uh, these coins soon as well based on the amount of damage your whole server does those will be super easy to claim you only need 5 billion damage in total and you can see uh, our server is already at 30 million so not an issue at all and to finish off uh, the thursday goals you will also want to go into the siege battle and proceed with the second siege of the week and actually friday uh, the only thing that happens is also siege so uh, Thursday first day of the siege Friday second day of the siege make sure to complete those to get your rewards and now during the weekends if you ha may have been gone for a long time there is a new rupture that happens only on Saturday and Sunday it will be called Path of Oblivion I believe and uh, I usually recommend to just quick battle it because the dungeon itself is quite long so Path of Oblivion, it will give you a bunch of Sky Stones, it will give you a bunch of Hensfire Shards, it will give you a lot of those Runic Weapon Stones, and it will give you a super limited item called, uh, like, one of the pieces, uh, this one, no, not this one, not this one, not this one, let me see if I can find it real quick. Yeah, it doesn't look like I can find it at the moment, but uh, that item will essentially be used to unlock a very, very expensive set as well as an equipment overlay in here so make sure to complete it otherwise you will be farming it for a very very long time for me it took like probably good three to four months to get enough items to get those weapons so yeah it's expensive but it's definitely worth it oh yeah and here's the item i was referring to ruins guardian mask since you can only do it two times per week and the drop rate is not even 100 percent you will need a total of 20 of these to get uh, the weapon set. Super, super expensive, but worth it. Okay, now that we're done with the stuff you need to do on specific days, I'm gonna move over to the stuff that you do daily, weekly, as well as monthly. So, daily. This, pretty much, you need to do every single day. Whenever you log in, some of the stuff is super important. First thing you do, free summon. Go there, summon that thing. Maybe you get something good, maybe not. Yesterday, I got a Dark Valkyria from mine, so hey, trust me, this is worth it. Second thing you want to check is the Exploration Captain. So in Guild Town, you have an Exploration Captain where you can get various fish. And in any other town, uh, apart from the Guild Town, I think Guild Town will get it soon as well. You'll want to head over to the regular Exploration Captain and get any materials you want from there. Next, you head over to your shop and you claim some of the free items. So... The free items will be in the play tab, you can get some of these, as well as go to the mileage shop. And whether you have the summoner pass or not, I would recommend doing these mileage claims. You use the heals that you spend in the exchange office to trade for mileage. And with mileage you can get OP items like maximization marbles and even mystical skulls. Now the next three points will be all about the profession tab. So in the alchemy, if you do them, make sure to do the daily mystical scroll also if you still want to upgrade your various towers in the guild 
you go to the processing tab and you craft five of these hammers they are pretty cheap and they will help you upgrade all of the buildings in the guild town and last but not least the daily discount crafting so this applies to any item that you have and as you can see here you'll have a specific amount of items and a specific amount of discount that you get the higher level the tower the more discount you get so make sure to bang out those discounted crafts because as you can see if you wanted to craft 300 of these instead of 450 i would only have to pay 360,000 gold and these refresh daily so you do want to end up use them for at least something after that you have to claim some of the rewards in your guild so first of all contribution tab you claim all of these that you are able to maybe you want to wait towards the end of the day reset to make sure that all of them are completed after that wheel of fortune one is free and then you can do three extra spins for 100 guild coins each i personally don't do them at the moment because i'm saving for the outfits but if you have nothing else to buy in the shop make sure to do those too and in the guild town you will want to head over to the guild energy tower this is the thing that I would say forget the most and you want to claim free energy for the day. This resets every day and the amount you get depends on the level of it. You can start with uh, 20 energy per day at level 4, uh, at level 1 I mean, and end up with 60 energy per day at level 9. The amount of energy you receive will be based on the level of contribution that you completed so basically if you only complete one you'll only get four energy level one and 12 at level nine or if you claim all five of these you will multiply those energy rewards by five and to finish off the guild uh, quests you will want to make sure that you head over to your request office and uh, do three of the tasks the rewards have been worth quite a lot you can see now you get essences even trial of uh or like spires of ascension tokens you can guild guild tokens like a lot of good rewards are available so make sure to do those and now a little bit more about the energy uses so currently you get 288 energy per day just for free just from the region uh, of it as long as your energy is not storage capped on top of that of course you will want to use your energy but you will want to be doing one to three refreshes every day now you can see that you can refresh the energy as much as you want however if you notice the cost the first refresh of the day will only cost you 100 crystals the second refresh will only cost you 200 crystals and the third refresh will only cost you 250 crystals after that every refresh that you do will cost you 300 so if you are planning on spending a lot of energy and don't feel like doing it on a another day just make sure to do the first three and after that you can save uh, the 300 refreshers for whenever you have uh, some time to refresh more and now the content that you have to do so first of all you go to raids once you have already completed your weekly entries you will want to be doing a daily entry for pretty much all of these so all first daily entries to each dungeon will actually have a pretty decent chance to reward you with a summoner item not only uh, several tokens or anything like that so uh, you can do multiple support runs for some of these earlier dungeons but uh, at least do the first support run for all of them because you do get quite a decent chance at getting this gear even at hero rate as you can see if you enter the battle support tab uh, these will be pretty much guaranteed rewards the first three but you can also get even mythical gear from these and it's not a super rare drop i'm not gonna lie you actually can profit quite a bit from these so make sure to do daily raids uh, also you get to battlefield three of these refresh every day so make sure to do those for arena refreshes uh, you will get 10 free refreshes for challenge and five for brawl however you get five extra uh, challenge arena tickets from the daily pass so in total you want to do at least 15 uh, challenge arenas per day then another thing that is super super easy to forget web events uh, you will remember to do the daily events in here yourself i'm confident of that but web events are something super easy to miss out currently for example there are two events happening so there is the hill ghost festival i think it actually maybe just finished yesterday but uh, let's say this event is where you only have a single day to do the task let's say the task was for the 14th of november 
today is the 15th, I would not be able to complete this quest anymore. So uh, I think I even missed one of the days, if I recall correctly. Or maybe it was another account, I'm not sure. But yeah, there's some of these quests that are only available to do on a specific day. And they do give you decent rewards, so make sure to do that. Uh, there's also an energy request. Uh, this one is a little bit more lenient. You can do it throughout several weeks. But again, check for web events because some of these are limited daily. And the last few things you want to do is uh, check your summoner pass. Uh, once you've used all your energy, maybe you haven't done some of these quests. So make sure to finish those out. Uh, daily challenges, weekly challenges you will complete as time goes on. Because they're pretty much the same as daily challenges but like 5 times more. So yeah, daily challenges, weekly challenges. And of course if you are not a summoner pass buyer, go do your daily gatherings. You have, I think you have like 1000 total but you can get up to 2000 on mobile if you just watch some ads. Now for the weekly stuff. So this stuff you can do throughout the week, doesn't matter which day you do it on. Quite a lot I've mentioned on Monday because it resets there. For this stuff it's a little bit less important so I put it in its own category. And first of all the guild rate. So again it's, it's important. However, you I couldn't pinpoint an exact date because I obviously don't know when you are doing your guild rates but in guild rates you will want to be doing uh, these bosses. The rewards are insane. You can see you can get pieces, purple tier items, devil mom pieces, all of that. Uh, a bunch of gold. The guild rate will change soon, but it will only be for the better. So make sure to do your guild rates weekly. If you are not able to hit a guild rate uh, together with your team, you can do something like doing a tiny bit of a hit on level 1, level 2, just make sure to not hit the highest level because then you will screw up the rewards for everyone. Uh, do one of the levels where you are confident that you will beat and it is not the last level. For us, level 5 is what we beat, so anything level 1 to level 4 is free to hit. Uh, you only need to hit once to receive the rewards for all of them, so hit the lowest level that's possible and uh, be done with it if you're not able to attend. And the second thing is you go to the general merchant and these have been recently buffed quite a bit. Uh, there is the discount shop. So here uh, every certain amount uh, of items can be purchased at a discounted price. So 10 gathering gloves at 84k if you look at the regular price of those then uh, gathering gloves would cost you 105,000 gold. So uh, yeah, you can get some of these items discounted every week, so make sure to purchase at least the purple tier ones. Uh, those will increase your gathering speed the most and they will have the biggest discount as well. And now the last stuff and the most important stuff, the monthly resets. So first of all, of the utmost importance is, I would say, the Galagos Ruins. Uh, it resets every 28 days. Make sure to do it. The rewards are insane. It's pretty much the only source of the fine stone that you need to actually get uh, insane amounts of uh, virals on your gear. And that will improve your gear a lot. And also the Galaga shop is insane. You can get 6 light and dark scrolls per week. 20 light and dark legendary scroll pieces per week. 2 the fine stones. 2 devil mons. 6 uh, 4 star devil mons. There's also an outfit that you will be able to buy quite fast I would say. And then there's some of these, uh, so if you have an overflow of Galagos tokens, you can consider purchasing something like this. Personally, wouldn't recommend going for these, I've already done a video and testing of them, and the drop rates that you see here are not equal. Most of the time you will get uh, one of the bottom like 4 or 5 rewards. I think on average, I found that this box drops like... Was it like 100k or something like that? I don't even quite recall it, but... Uh, from the amount you spend, usually it's not worth it. If you really have a lot of tokens, go for something like this because these items are a bit more there. The second thing is the monthly Trial of Ascension reset as well. So it should reset every 28 days. Uh, there were some recent patches where one lasted only two weeks, then the second lasted like 40 days. I don't know why that happened. It's just some weird rules, but yeah, uh, there are a total of 100 normal levels. 20 hard levels, uh, so once you complete those you get a lot of rewards. The hard level rewards have been buffed quite a bit, as you can see you get even symbols here, a devilmon, I think some of this stuff is actually new. 
if I could even find it, like Angelmon Selection Boss, that was never featured as it evolved, a Hero Artifacts, which are super hard to craft, and also once you complete the normal stages, make sure to do these stages as well, there are 5 in total, 3 of them will be these chest stages, and 2 of them will be a little ducky stages, uh, the rewards, especially for the last ones, have been buffed a lot, as you can see, not only you get a lot of gold, but also a bunch of purple items, uh, you'll get quite a lot of blue items in the lower stages for these ones it's mostly just gold so make sure to do them once you do the toas you'll also get special room entries you will only get around five to six per month now instead of 40 however the rewards have been buffed insanely i think it's like they mentioned something like eight or nine times buffed uh so you can still get like 30 mystical skulls like several light and dark legendary skulls just from those five entries in there Another thing, uh, Hero Area. Now it resets monthly, apart from the Bufferment quest, so you do want to be completing these monthly entries on all of your summoners. The rewards are really good, especially for the mini boss quest. So the regular mobs will give you a bunch of gold, a bunch of magical room pieces, and a few of these items. I would say these are probably the lesser rewards. These two are the most important ones. And for the elite creatures, again, a bunch of gold, a bunch of tough leather, and you'll get, I think it's like 6 legendary runes uh, for each of these missions. So if you count the amount of runes that you can get, 6 legendary runes, you got 5 maps in total, that's 30. And then you got 4 summoners in total, that is 120 legendary 6 star runes. Uh, you do not want to miss out on those, so make sure to do these monthly. If you are able to attend them, make sure to do the weekly buffering as well for me. Unfortunately, it's a bit out of the time range, but these rewards that you get here, Transcendence Material Boxes, will be super important when you want to work on your symbols, because symbols will require you to craft them using those Transcendence Materials. Another thing you don't want to forget is the account shop once again, because some of the items are monthly, and in here, the most important thing you want to purchase is the 20 mystical skulls. There are some items that also reset monthly, something like Blessing Marbles, which personally I don't see enough value in them. Devilmon, again, too expensive. Yes, 2.5 thousand crystals does not seem like a lot in most cases, but they are expensive, they are expensive, I don't know. And the Transcendent Skull, again, I personally find it super overvalued, I just don't have... I don't see enough value in a 7.5k crystal transcendent skull, maybe it was like 5k or below I would buy it, uh, but it's up to you if you feel like this amount of crystal is not too expensive, feel free to buy it as well. And the very very last thing to finish off, so you go to the arena shop and if you are able to afford it you will want to grab the legendary skull that resets once per month, uh, not once per week like the rest of the items, this one is once per month, so you want to grab that. You go to the Brawl Shop, this one is super important, uh, you will be getting 2 Devil Mounts per month uh, from the Brawl Shop, so make sure to grab those. Whether you want to grab the Light or Dark Scroll that also resets monthly is up to you, I personally got it because I just don't spend enough in the Brawl Shop, these are like the only two items I actually buy, so I have quite a bit of tokens for them, but yeah, uh, make sure to at least get the Devil Mons, if you are able to afford the Light and Dark Scroll, get that as well. And the last, last thing is the Battlefield Shop, so there's a lot of new items that uh, have been added if you haven't been playing for the last few months, but the main thing you want to grab is the three devil mons that are available to every rank now. Uh, they are no longer gatekeep by like hero and warrior ranks because of how the system works. You want to grab these devil mons, three per week. After that, there are quite a few of decent items. However, you do need to play the battlefield dungeon quite a bit to afford them. So uh, some of the more notable ones will be the defining catalyst. Uh, these are so sort of limited so i do recommend grabbing them if you are still actively working on your gear uh, there's also these durability desert stones if you're really struggling with uh crafting them through professions and also this this is super good value for 120 you are able to get a box where you can claim any type of a legendary item and it won't be probably too important for something like books but if you're someone who doesn't have access to master profession 
the gems the gems will be the main selling point here because the gems they don't affect your summoner they affect all of your monsters so the gems see insane value so let's say i have the water weapon equipped all of my monsters are getting 9 attack 9.3 hp 4.6 attack speed if you stack that on a shield or any sub weapon as well as your active items that's two of those for all of your monsters for any unequipped weapon uh 25 percent of those gem stats also work so let's say for the dark one uh my monsters would get 2.5 percent uh this is like 2.6 percent and like 1.2 percent attack speed still super important so yeah that's pretty much everything that you need to do in the game throughout the day throughout the week throughout the month some of the stuff may have been new to you so feel free to explore how it works in there but yeah that's about it let me know if i may have missed something i'll make sure to list it in the pinned comment and yeah peace